much. Did you come across the first character? And it's a guy with like the shittiest mic going, Hello! So Denmarkian. <laughs> Danish. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Denmarkian. So you can imagine a 12, 13 year old boy. You didn't invade the rest of the world to speak their language. Oh, holy sh. And I'm about to annoy a lot of people. Fallout 76. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first ever second episode of the Triards Podcast. A lot has happened since uh, last podcast. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Burnsy's gone out and touched grass and met a bunch of other content creators. Uh, there's been a lot of like cool trailers that have come out for the Lord of the Rings series, uh, the new Game of Thrones series. I forgot what it's called. Um, but uh, the biggest thing that has happened is that Sim is going to become a father! Oh! Round of applause. Thanks, I appreciate it. Little baby Sin! Yeah, yeah that's, that's You do big, have man. to call him or her Sin, whatever. If it's a boy or a girl, it has to be called Sin. It wouldn't make sense uh, for, for, the, for the country where I come from, but I'll consider <laughs> it. I think yeah. she, Shay's gonna veto that, but we'll see. <laughs> So, I think Sin Junior. There we go. I see she doesn't want Junior. She says no Junior. I said my first name and then add, added Junior to it. She said no. Fuck that. Mm. So, we're gonna have some tension in the naming facility. <laughs> no, we already picked out like a few names for for a daughter. It's just we're struggling for for a, mm. uh, for a, like a boy. Um, but. I don't know, we still haven't really thought about it like thoroughly until we actually know the name, uh, sorry, <clears throat> the gender of it. And we're gonna find out on 11th, so. It was a couple of weeks back, you told me something about, you talked about having children. It uh, was- You said it a while. Yeah, so, I don't wanna like, again, I don't wanna talk too much about it because it's just my private life and I don't think people would care about that nor yeah. do I like to share too much. But in, in, in summary, we don't, we didn't plan for it. It was just one of those things where uh, we weren't like actively trying or we weren't um, we didn't have a concocted plan how we want to go about it we just said hey if it happens it happens and it did so it was a happy little accident and uh, yeah we'll see how things go I'm a little bit freaked out not gonna lie <laughs> I, mean, I <laughs> you know, would be too if, if you yeah. wasn't I'd be scared yeah, so. yeah <laughs> exactly it's it just sucks she's not handling it very well she's constantly ill in the morning and stuff like that but mm. it is what it is you know that's just life i guess you're, you're yeah. literally spawning in a new character it's <laughs> <laughs> currently it's in the character creation stuff yeah yeah you try to come up with its name and if it's anything like your characters in skyrim you know it's gonna be like syndra <laughs> syndranin syndranin yeah. yeah it's not gonna be any of that because my oh. characters oh, especially female ones are you know a little bit <laughs> NSFW, so <laughs> it's not a good connection. No, it has to be like on a serious note. It has to be like a name that is um, that makes sense in my country, in her country, and in, in English as well. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a little bit difficult. We picked out. I mean, I don't care. Why not reveal it for a female? We already have two names, which is one of them is Anastasia, uh, which in Serbian would be pronounced Anastasia, mm -hmm. and another one is Ilianora. Uh, and Serbian, that's <laughs> pronounced Eleonora. So, and that works as well if it was that one because Ellie is short and Ellie's like a standard yeah. name, so it's, yeah. it works like in both it's, situations. Right? Exactly, and it's easy to give nicknames for as well. It's the names that both of us like a lot, and uh, they will work uh, in pretty much any environment because the kid is basically going to be speaking to my parents a lot of the times who doesn't speak English, they don't speak mm -hmm. English at all, and Shay's parents don't speak English or Serbian. So oh, yeah, this is going to be the most multilingual yeah. <laughs> child in the world. It's like yeah. Serbian, English, and yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, I was about to say. Wait, I'm, I'm going to sound like an idiot. I'm just going to say a word, but, and I know it's wrong, but I'm saying it just to get Denmarkian. <laughs> Whatever Denmark oh, Danish. Danish. I just said Danish. it. Danish. <laughs> Danish. Yeah. <laughs> Denmarkian. Well, I... That's your average Brit. It's all right. right it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You whatever. You, no you, one knows the Danes anyway. You okay. didn't. You didn't invade the rest of the world to speak their language. So you know. It's, it is I also didn't know Denmark was in. Uh, well, was Scandinavian until like you told me stuff. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, That's such I just a thought. Weird... It, I didn't even know it was in that like field. I thought name, it was near okay, Germany or something. Name every country in Scandinavia right now. Oh. The, well, I know them now. Wait, no, yeah. do I? Come on. You got do it. Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Norway. 
Mm -hmm. Then Mark. Yeah. Am I not done? That's it. No. Wait, no. Are you sure? What? Uh, Wait, Denmark, what? Norway, and Finland? Sweden. Yeah, there's more. It's Finland in Scandinavia. Yeah, Finland's actually in, it counts as Scandinavia. Literally, my wife told me to fuck off, and that's not the case the other day when we were talking about <laughs> I mean, this. they're not, like, like culture-wise. They're, they're quite different to, okay. like, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. We and I guess you also couldn't... Can, can you plot Iceland in there? You kind of can. I don't know, you're the Scandinavian. You tell <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't you know, also I didn't even the... know Denmark was there. <laughs> you also have the Faroe Islands. Oh, that's shit. a really oh, small... Damn. That's like a... I think the population there is like 50,000 or something. Interesting. Well, you know, Brexit means Brexit, so we don't speak anymore. <laughs> you don't well, have that, to I... <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. You remember when I bought those uh, clothes? Those, oh, uh, yeah, the... The, the merch. It's not merch. It is merch. It's, it's not literally merch. merch. Describe merch. it without saying what it is. And it's a brand else... called ZRK London. Which belongs to... It was founded by Zerk, <laughs> but it's not a, It's not merch. Like, it doesn't say... Like, it says, like, branding standard ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. It says, like, no snake and blah, 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 ladders. and But it, but it's very good. But the issue mm -hmm. with Brexit was that I had to pay the price I paid. I, I bought a hoodie... And a t-shirt. I had to pay pay the equal price to those two combined for the shipping. And they sent it to the wrong place, didn't they? And they sent it to they sent it to like the coast of Norway for some reason. <laughs> so Gim had I... to get in a boat and go all the way down the coast and get nah, himself. They, they fixed it afterwards, but it took okay. a hell well, of a long time. I was trying to give time. you a good story, but you know yeah. you can tell the truth. That's fine. <laughs> My life's not that exciting, bro. Oh well. Like the last couple of Nobody... weeks, it's it's it's, it's... a bit. <laughs> We just went through a two-year pandemic, so nobody's life is exciting unless you're a true, you know, a mm. goddamn rich person or a celebrity or something. Yes, like those three celebrities, <laughs> hearts. YouTube celebrities. Yes, our, our big army of 800 subs. Let's go, boys. Anyway, also speaking of that, thanks for 800 subs already. By yeah. the time we're filming this, we've mm -hmm. the trailer's been out. We've basically just uploaded the actual first podcast so it's been like what two and a bit days almost three now since three it's days yeah, and it's it's doing a lot better than we thought because it's a new channel and uh we don't care about ourselves so we assume no one else would but you know yep doing better than that so cheers for that everyone i think uh, our general kind of like a mindset when making videos is uh you're like heavily critical to yourself so you try way too hard to make it mm -hmm. as best as possible and I guess mm. that same applies here. And we're like, eh, you know, it's just a podcast. There's just so many podcasts out there. Nobody's going to watch this. But yeah, we got pleasantly surprised and we couldn't be happier to see the the support that we've gotten so far. So, yeah. Even like a thousand, I don't know how many views it's on now, like a th almost 2,000. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even that, when you just think about it, imagine 2,000 people in a room. That's, that's yeah. a lot of people. A lot so. of people. So and we do matter, boys. People do care. <laughs> you see? Yes. People <laughs> care. Well, we got a lot of Sin looks like a Chad comments. Can oh. confirm. <laughs> That's, yeah. I don't know what to um, say. But I mean, I thank you, I guess, but I don't agree. But sure, I guess. Uh, I think we got probably something about Gim. So good, good one, Gim. Well done, mate. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Wait, and I we got a lot of comments. What, what, what do we get? We got... Because basically, we in the last podcast, we asked you to leave segment ideas and what you want to see from the podcast. Which and, absolutely um, no one did! Yeah, so <laughs> we'd be like... Everyone, big round of applause to you. Thank you for participating. <laughs> I mean, we, we, had, we, had, we had people uh, suggesting that we should play Skyrim together, which is mm -hmm. something we've already talked about. Yeah. So, who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll do that in the future. I personally want to. It sounds like fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else did we get? We got uh, some people... We had <laughs> someone asking for a mod pack which I, i've i've spoke about this because i naturally me gim and sin always get these questions like why don't you make a mod pack especially with like for example i do game change videos which are big collections of yeah. mods to make it a certain theme so intrinsically a mod pack goes very well with that yeah but mm -hmm. the problem is mod packs one take a very long time to set up <clears throat> two you have to maintain it yeah well there's just it one and two yeah so the problem with that is I don't have, and I can speak for all of us confidently, none of us have enough time to like go through that. And then if we make multiple mod lists, keep maintaining them all constantly is going to be the biggest nightmare in the entire world. Yeah. So we can't do that right now. I've always said, though, 
I mean, this is an open call. If anyone out there wants to make or work with us to like make a mod pack, we will work with you to like give you like a list and set it up and things, but we can't maintain it. So someone yeah. else will have to do that. So the offer's there. If anyone wants to, then you can reach out, but uh, yeah, we ain't going to do it. Sorry. Yeah, if I can just add, that's such actually a good point. And it's actually this podcast is a good opportunity to use, uh, to use it to explain because I've had very little but few criticism telling me that I'm essentially gatekeeping my mod list or something like that. Um, I like my mod list the way I like my videos. I want everything to be um, as compact. Women then. <laughs> Not women. <laughs> I want it to be as compact as possible and as maintained as possible. And if I'm unable to release a product that is um, bug free and that you will not going to struggle with, then I'm simply not going to do it because I risk um, getting into a position where I could be accused for releasing unreleased products or unreleased packs and rightfully so because when you essentially make a podcast or sorry a mod pack or a mod list you it's your responsibility to maintain it because some people are going to see that list two months down the line or maybe six months down the line so you have a responsibility to keep that maintained and if you don't you are basically wasting other people's time so we do not have the time considering uh everything to to make these pockets and also just want to add that i'm not a big fan of mod packs or um i guess you could call it uh, mod collections and anything related to wabajack i guess that would be a good segue to talk about this a little bit mod packs in general i don't think that that's what modding is about uh i don't want to say that just because i went through the learning process of how to mod that everybody should it's just that modding is never going to provide you with a perfect 100% working game that is not going to eventually crash or eventually encounter, encounter a bug and all of that stuff. And in order for you to know how to troubleshoot this, you have to have some sort of knowledge or at least be familiar with the, pa with the pack or with the mod list that you've created. That way, you are more easily know how um, to troubleshoot it and fix the issues. For example, just briefly, one minute, my uh, visual overhaul is something that I've tested over 20, 20 hours and I've had a person that also does uh, maintaining the mod list. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend you're 100% going to be crash free. You're going to encounter crashes from time to time, whether it's because, I don't know, you, leak, you lack RAM memory. There's a specific cell that there's some sort of a mesh that is maybe not... Um, either properly optimized or converted or something like that and eventually you kind of knowing what your mod list is about will lead you to the path how to fix that problem and then so you can continue your playthrough instead of just being frustrated and then going to the mod pack creator and saying your mod list is buggy your mod list is unmaintained you you wasted my time and all of that so that's just my take i'm not a big fan of webajacks i'm not a big fan of mod packs and i can with confidence say that i will never make one uh, primarily because I think modding is uh, about what I just talked about, but secondly, because we simply don't have the time to maintain it. It's a big process and there's a responsibility behind it. So there you go. Yeah, and I mean, it's called modding for a reason, right? If it was bug free, uh, I say bug free, but we're in a Bethesda game, but if it was bug free, like meant to be working uh, content, then it would be something not modding, right? Modding is fan creations, then you're never going to be able to secure a perfect fan creation because yep. they're created by inexperienced people to say the least right um and you get experience by doing modding and you learn unload and you're able to make some really insane things but you don't have that like structure of what a triple a studio will have of like going through bug testing fixing things making sure everything's ready to be packaged before sending out which bethesda may or may not do very well but at least they do it more than nothing right like it yep. happens to some degree with their games at least which well, you don't always get with mods and you can't I think it's easy for us to say that you know it's it's cool to learn about modding and it's an experience in itself and it's educational to learn how to fix mods or um just could just balance out a, l a list of mods but saying that i also had uh so a friend of my older brother who's not into modding at all he just used to play skyrim when it came out uh came to me and was like is there a way for me to kind of get into this without fully um delving as deep into it as like someone like us like we are right mm -hmm. and he's mm -hmm. working at full on nine to five every day so for him uh, i think it's like 
for people like that, stuff like Webjack Mollis might be, you know, a worthwhile thing to take a look at. Because I know he had a lot of fun. He installed one of those lists and said that it completely changed his game. And yeah, and that was enough for him. He didn't really have to delve into it. Although it is fun to delve into it because you like crashing. Yeah. It's a lot of frustration, but it's a lot of fun as well in the end. And it's very yeah. rewarding when you learn how to properly set up a Mollis. And... It, it's also possible that I mean, possible. It's absolutely guaranteed that we, especially us three, take uh, simple changes in mods for granted a lot of the time. Like, if you are only ever played Xbox Skyrim, and let's assume modding wasn't on Xbox, and it's only vanilla for the whole of your life, you could download 10 mods and you would be like, this is the best thing ever. It's like changed so much. I remember the first time I like, installed an EMB prop and I was like, I need nothing else ever again. This is like revolutionized the game and it just made the graphics better. But yeah, like you, you just feel so much change from having nothing and then having something. So yeah. when you start off like modding for the first time um, and you install like a mod pack, like Gim said, I can <clears> expect <throat> that would be like an insane moment to be like, this is the same game, but it's like almost like a, you're playing a remaster for the first time. It's like there's so much mm. more stuff added. Um, that enhances your experience. Speaking of, how did you get into modding for the first time? Oh, is that your God. segue? <laughs> yeah, no, you it's guys a, have actually never told me this. It's you? a good we segue, and we never spoke about this. Actually, I don't remember anybody yeah. saying this. Who who wants to start? I guess I will, because it. I guess my own is kind of simple. I guess I I played Skyrim on PS3 for the first, and it was awful. It, like as soon as you get to like level fifty above on PS3 back in the day, I don't know if it's still like this now. It would be the laggiest thing ever. You crash all the time. I don't what, know what really? was wrong about that platform, but it just didn't true? work. Yeah, at the time when I was playing oh, it, at least. Okay. Yeah. Like when it first came out, it would have been like the first year. It just mm. didn't work once you get to a high level. I think it was just because the game had so much data in a save file um, that it, it couldn't figure things out on that system or whatever. So I, I kind of like had one playthrough on that and then started moving to Xbox 360, played a bunch on that because it actually worked. Um, and then I had my first PC and I, I, I remember the first time I actually did modding was the Steam Workshop because I discovered that and I was like, what the hell is this? It's like people make things for games and you could just click them literally by a press of a button. You press literally like <laughs> activate on the Steam Workshop and it's just in your game. And I saw a Lord of the Rings weapon pack and this is the first mod that I ever did. It's the Isradil, Isradil yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the first mod I ever installed and I literally remember going through that in my head for the first time now like going up the seven thousand steps and then there's like a shrine with a forge mm -hmm. which where you actually get these weapons and just having like one new weapons in the first place and two like lord of the rings weapons which apart from sin we're both like a massive fan of um i was just like this is the coolest thing ever it's yeah. insane and, it, and that's what i mean when you say you take things for granted back then i was blown away by that just like adding new weapons into the game. And to be fair, that's a great mod even now, but mm. especially back then, I was just blown away by that. And I think over time, you like you get into it on the on the Steam Workshop and then you start like looking up videos and then you realize, oh, the Steam Workshop isn't where actually most people do this. It, there's an actual Nexus and things like that. And then you just kind of roll from there. But I also remember that same system going for video creation in a way. The first thing I ever, got really into doing was taking screenshots of my playthrough like if something really cool was happening i would like go tfc1 and then take a screenshot of that and i would do that through my whole playthrough i'd have only i would just tell the story of my playthrough through screenshots it would just be for me i wouldn't put them anywhere but i just yeah. thought it was cool to like look back after and remember things cause... hey dad look what i did on skyrim <laughs> yeah but i have a, I have an <laughs> awful memory so i can't like remember everything i kind of vaguely remember things but having screenshots there to just go back and just like press backwards and be like, oh yeah, I was there, I was there. That was really cool. And then that progressed to me downloading the Take Notes mod, Journal of the Dragonborn, yeah. where you can yeah. literally write your own story. So every day, once you get back from your adventure, you'd write up, today I did this. And I literally, I, shit you not, I have thousands of pages of like an actual story that I was like making up. And I did this like multiple times. So it went from just like screenshots to that. And then I started like recording some things. Like I'd, I figured out OBS and things like that. And I'd record my own game plan. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then that obviously led to actual video creation. But that is my whole like modding and video creation 
sort of origin story. Yeah, that definitely ties in to like what Gim said last episode. Um, like just the Bethesda games are such a good role playing experience, man. Like being able to write things down through mods as well, it just enhances that uh, that experience. That's such a good point. Uh, Bethesda games are like unmatched when it comes to role playing. Anyway, so Gim, what's your story about uh, about the mod? Dude. <laughs> so I remember the exact moment I saw, I, I I just witnessed the game Skyrim in my life. So when was it? So 2012, I was I was 11 years old. Remember we were at the, we were at uh, we were visiting some family friends for dinner, and I I usually so my brother there was a dude there who was the same age as them, so they went and hug out. I didn't really have anyone, so I was just like. Um, the other guy, my brother's friend, he was always like, oh, just go down and play on my mm -hmm. PlayStation. Yeah. And uh, so I'd go down, um, and I always played this Simpsons game. <laughs> it wasn't good at all. It wasn't the Hit and Run one, the GTA. Uh, uh, you, know which, you, know, you know which one that is? The Wait, Hit and Run? Um, There's like a Simpsons Hit and Run game that I used to play on the GameCube. Oh, that, Simpsons. That was based... Ah, okay. Yeah, I thought you said was... Sims. Sorry, I got oh, confused. Oh, no, no. It was basically Simpsons like hit and GTA. Run was fucking lit. Yeah, yeah, it was lit. But Did you play the driving game as well? I don't know what it was called, but there was also like a car one, and that was insane. I as don't well. know. I can't remember what that one. But was the called. one he had was a platformer. It wasn't that good. But I just remember playing it, and and all the while I was playing it, there was a cover at the bottom, and it was dark, and it was the <laughs> Skyrim logo, and it said Skyrim, and I was like, "Fuck me, that looks good." And it said it had the age limit of eighteen on it as well. So that automatically made me more intrigued to figure Skyrim out what it was. Skyrim was an 18. Yeah, it's you an sure? 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least over here. Like the red 18 Peggy thing. I don't think there's anything like graphical sexual in it. There's though. blood. There's violence. There's... I don't really look at Peggy's nowadays. <laughs> what but, uh... rating is Skyrim age? It's 12, I think. Peggy oh, 12. 17 plus 12. Yeah. <laughs> 12? <laughs> no, no, no. 12. They literally discuss like. What was it? Seven <laughs> things in it. You don't have anyway, 12. In Norway, it's 18. So. Oh, it, it does actually say 18. Okay. Fair enough. I assumed it shouldn't be 18. Because, like, GTA compared to Skyrim is a big jump in mm. graphic and, like, sexual content. I didn't think that would be the same rate. But, okay, it's 18. I mean, back in the days, if anything, if there was a little bit of violence, they'd put it to 18. Right. So, uh, continuing on, I, I memorized the the, word, the title Skyrim, and I went back home, went to YouTube, looked it up, and I just saw, like, the episode one of some playthrough. And I've told, I've probably told you both this, but I just remember seeing, so the dude who, who was playing on in the YouTube video picked an high elf character, and he was a mage. And I just remember seeing the hats in first mm -hmm. person, like doing this. <laughs> I looked at it and like, holy, that's cool. That's yeah. epic. I had the yeah. same experience. I watched <laughs> it before I even knew what the game was. I saw Tobuscus play it. And I literally, <laughs> I saw the first episode and I saw him go through like Helgen. And then he came out of Helgen in an open world. And I saw like the hands like that, like you said, mm. like one was like magic and one was like a sword. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, that's, I've never seen a game. Let you and just like choose what to put in your hands and like be able to do anything with it. And then I and the hand it, was the like day. nice and smooth and the magic reflected on the surface. And I just remember seeing that and, and instantly going to my just <laughs> memorizing it. And the next time I went shopping with my mom, I got I got her to buy it for me. <laughs> and so I this was on the Xbox 360, by the way. So that was mm -hmm. my first venture to Skyrim. So I played that day and I probably had so many hours on that until i got myself a gaming laptop oh you and went I straight started... into it yeah this was like tw tw two years after so 2013 i got a gaming laptop oh, use early which, is, into it then, yeah. which is not something i recommend to for <laughs> anyone to do it's a shit experience yeah. it really is yeah. but um and at the same time I was, I was watching obviously i was watching mxr there was another guy who i I hate that I've forgotten his name, but he... So at, at that time, they made the exact same videos. They had the same monotone voice, but the other guy was like... Do you remember how people were kind of a part of... Uh, what was it? Mach, what, machin, machinima, what was it? yeah. Machinima. So they made, like, videos on behalf of them or something. They had some sort of deal. So there was a guy who did that at the same time as MXR. I forgot his name, but I watched I'm sure those... someone in the comments will know who we're talking about, hopefully. Yeah. And then we can have a look. So you can imagine a 12, 13-year-old boy seeing all these, you know, mods. <laughs> seeing these, you know, 
Whoa, they said that stuff dumb. Was <laughs> well, that meant start doing that type of stuff back then? Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah, okay. he was. I didn't know. If, I didn't know if he went into that because he ran out of stuff to cover, um, or no, no, no. <laughs> or that, that, that was what he wanted. That ju was just a part of what there was to cover, and so I was mm. like, "Holy shit, what's this website Nexus?" <laughs> and I went to it, and I was just like flabbergasted. And I remember Dali and Mods for the t first time without like thinking about anything, everything just crashing. And uh -huh. then uh, I started watching just guides. So by like late 2014, I knew like how to mod. So from I'll that be honest, point on... I didn't really, and this is embarrassing to say, I didn't really know how to mod, like how to mod until mm -hmm. I met Sin. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew to just to uh, install things yeah. on Nexus. I you didn't know so... really about load orders. I didn't know about yeah. like patching or anything like that. I didn't know about conflicts really. Anytime there's a conflict in... What was the thing you use? Like, Nexus, the Nexus Mod <laughs> Manager, right? Yeah, Vortex. Yeah, I used I Nexus Mod you... Manager first and then Vortex when it came out. I remember, um, like, talking to you about what, like, what was the best thing and you were like, no, it's so much, like, easier. I can just yeah. put it there and just, <laughs> it sorts it out itself. I don't need, like, a thousand plugins. And... <laughs> yeah, because I didn't understand. Like, this yeah. is my modding experience before I started, like, YouTube and then actually getting into the community itself. Because I was just like, I wasn't really a part of a community. I wasn't looking at videos that much. I wasn't like looking at Nexus comments or anything like that. I, mm -hmm. Unless I had a problem that I needed to find an answer to. But it would literally be, I'd have one playthrough, which I'll start. By the way, do not recommend. Don't take this as a advice. I would start with basically just like no mods on. And then I would like put an EMB on. And then put a few mods on. And then uh, every like day on the same playthrough, I would add a few more mods on. So I was on one playthrough building my mod list and also playing and you can imagine how uh glitchy and bad and how many crashes i got and how many save games i had to uncorrupt um yeah, yeah that was my experience for basically all of modding and even up when i was making like my first videos like my recommendations are a little bit better now but like back in the day i would just <laughs> recommend mods that would just not work with each other mm. and i just thought they did because i don't understand anything i was just like yeah use this and use this and then someone in the comments would be like yeah they're incompatible and i'm like no they're not i used them and I, yeah i used them to make the video but i didn't like play yeah. anything did you um, also have the humbling experience of not knowing like the limit of mods you could use in correlation to this hardware you had so I had the laptop, right? But I was downloading everything like 4K mm. texture this, 4K texture that, That's what I did grass as well, yeah. density. <laughs> and and I remember my, <laughs> like at one point I had 19 frames per second. I just remember <laughs> my laptop, it was literally melting. It was so hot. It was like a fat gaming laptop as well. One of those Republic of Gamer ones from Asus. Right. And it was, I just remember that thing. Um, I think modding with that laptop destroyed that laptop for me like i remember one of the fans stopped working while i was playing skyrim <laughs> the... <laughs> but it, um, but you gotta appreciate that that hardware man that that's that's what it's gotta, how you learn man in. you know yeah, through, yeah, yeah. through just like pushing the limits that's what we talked about last episode as well mm. i remember when Burnsy you said that like i remember like me and you just met and we were just like chatting and all, all that and I'm having this problem. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I did wrong. And he boots up his uh, screen share, right? And I see his mod list and it's just uh, <laughs> complete <laughs> chaos. And I'm like, why is this above this? Why is this here? It's like, okay, what do I do? It was just an absolute chaos. I, I, I wasn't even a mod organizer until you no, moved me on yeah. there. <laughs> and but you the, took a while to get me on there as well. I was yeah, like, no, Vortex is just so... No, I, I know what I'm doing on there. I didn't. I know. You didn't want to budge at all, but eventually, <laughs> eventually you, you, bud, you, eventually you, uh, you changed your mind and you uh, learned pretty fast, which was, I guess, you know... Yeah, because I actually fun. got into it. I got the yeah. itch of like, oh, I actually like, like figuring out this stuff now. Yeah. But yeah. at the time, I was just... Because I think it was more so that at the time, I wanted to play the game and now I want to install mods. Yeah. You don't get to play the game and install mods. That doesn't work. Anyone yeah. will know. You install mods and you never play the game. That's how that works. And everyone at home will relate. Pretty much. That. You just spend yeah. three yeah. nights for three hours, time. and then you're like, actually, yeah. I want to change my tree mod uh -huh. now. Yeah, and then yeah, you change it, and then it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah and then you I'm have to restart the entire these. playthrough because you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you don't want it on the same file. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Everyone enjoys it. Which is yeah. why Skyrim lives so long because everyone thinks I'll play eventually, but never do. Which is why I've never to somehow manage in 2022. I mm -hmm. remember when I when I was like uh, just started the YouTube channel and I just started uh, uh, creating uh, videos and whatever, but I would still keep my save files and play the game regularly uh, behind the scenes. 
And I remember when I was actually screen sharing and you, you're you looking and you see all of these different gameplay pop-ups and like, why do you even use these mods? You're never <laughs> gonna play the damn game. Just remove uh -huh. them because when you boot up a new save, you have, I don't know, Moontails asking you which difficulty you want. You have mm -hmm. um, a religion mod asking you which religion you want to pick first <laughs> to start with. And all of these 10 pop-ups, which obviously makes sense if you are playing the game for the gameplay. But if you just want to get into the game to record something, these are just bothering true. you interrupting you and stuff like that so mm -hmm. and eventually so, man, i said and eventually i said you know what he's right i'm done and i just removed all these mods so they stopped bothering that's why me. i love yeah, that but, because that i was new... like oh. you fucking go then Gim. I was... <laughs> <laughs> because there's a new mod that came out like a couple of months ago uh, which saved the mod configuration menu uh presets yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which is, which uh makes it so that those pop-ups don't come up yeah, I just CM thought of that because I used to suffer with the same thing. I'd like uh, yeah. Frostfall. Do you want this? Do you want that? And yeah, yeah. I think but it's there... a fact as well of like um, I was a little because I started earlier than both of you. I kind of like got through the YouTube phase pretty before both I met both of you. So I was already not playing the game by the time I met both of you. I'll just be modding and recording videos, and then you two are still actually playing from now on. <laughs> and then, and I was like, you're not going to play this within like a month or two. You're just going to be recording videos. He was like, here I am. And then yep. like in a month, he was like, I'm not playing anymore. I remember you telling me that so many times, and I didn't want to let go of the hope <laughs> that I will eventually get to play the damn game. But Listen, yeah. if I, I would love to be able to actually want to play the game, but it's just the nature of like, when you spend this long making videos, the last thing you want to do after spending 16 hours in game recording yeah. is then mm. play Skyrim. <laughs> Pretty much. Unfortunately, Pretty much. as it is. Yep. Um, I guess my uh, my story how I got introduced into modding is I don't want to go too much because we already spent too much time on this segment, but it's not actually that interesting. Uh, but it it's I think everybody experienced this. The said game. I remember seeing the hands, and I was <laughs> absolutely yeah. blown away. Like, and I the what I saw was um, I think it was Todd showcasing him walking down that pathway towards mm. the Guardian Stones, uh, and then using healing magic. That's mm -hmm. what I remembered, and then I guess he goes into the skill tree, picks up the dual casting perk, and then starts dual casting. I was like, my god, this is absolutely insane. That was it. I was completely sold. I never heard about Elder Scrolls before that. Uh, I was more oh. into like GTAs and first-person shooters and uh, some MMOs as well. But I never heard about RPGs in that particular uh, way. And so, yeah, I was absolutely blown away. And I played the game a little bit, but I never completed it. I never completed the full story. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> never. And then I got introduced into mods. Uh, mm. And then I just started scouring the Nexus. And mm. I basically was one of those, I guess you could say, the good modders or the good <laughs> readers who goes and bothers to actually read the mod page or mm. read the instructions and try to minimize this bugs. guy. <laughs> Dude, so yeah, my you were like, why don't you just read the mod page? And I'm like, I don't, I don't need to read the mod page. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like 750 words on the mod page. And Bert's just like, what? this doesn't matter. This is not important. <laughs> I remember when he made a combat video. It's like insane combat video. It's so well edited and everything. And, and I'm like, Wait, hold on. Why did you put mortal enemies when you have <laughs> Impa Sekiro combat? It's like, what do you mean? I'm like, they're not compatible because Impa does the same thing as mortal enemies. It's just hilarious. Yeah, they got anyway. a lot of comments saying that. So, you know, uh, you learned your lesson. I didn't do it next time. Wait. It is what it is. By the way, speaking of mods, um, what would be your guys' favorite mod ever released? That you would basically put at the, at the, at the throne of the best mod that you've ever experienced. Basically, we're counting every category possible. Visuals, gameplay, followers. Oh, okay. Oh, so you want to do, you want to do like multiple ones? No, no, no. Uh, you... It's your top of all the categories together. I will say mine oh. because it's, I, I already know mine and it's unbeatable thus far. Legacy of the Dragonborn. Everybody knows oh, that I'm right. a huge fan. Yeah. So I'll let you guys now take it away. Oh, God. I... It's really tough because I... I'm... I'm like, what did I enjoy the most? What did I have the most impact from? Or what did I just use the most? Because I like, liked it so much. So Take Notes was revolutionary for me. Because that was my playthroughs. I was spent, honestly, I was spending more time writing than I was actually playing the game at that point. Because it would take so long to write up your entire day in Skyrim when a normal day in Skyrim lasts like, what, 20 minutes or something. Um, so that was, I have to kind of sort of say that just because of like, that's the, the thing I found the most use from and the most enjoyment from. But... I can't discount the amount of time I've spent with Inigo 
when I actually played the game. And I know, Sin, you, like, I don't know about now. I mean, you don't play it now, so it doesn't really matter. But, like, you didn't really and have never really, like, follow mods of any kind yeah. or anything like that. Because yeah. you like to play on your own and mm -hmm. make up your own story and things. Yeah. But just the way Inigo is created and, and because it's created, like, the voice actor, Gary, is the creator himself. So if he wants to add a new thing, pull up the mic, do it, and it's in there. You don't have to like ask for someone to do it, ask to retake. If he has an idea of how he wants it done, he can do it. And and that creates like a really intimate and like uh interesting character because any idea you have, you go you go straight from your brain to the character. You don't have to try and translate it to someone else and try and get the same feeling and anything like that. Um so Inigo would be my like official answer, which I guess is sort of a basic answer because that'll be a lot of people's. But in practicality, probably take note. If I yeah, just say. just to expand briefly on the legacy of the Dragonborn, because some people would find that opinion controversial. Because I know that some pe some people were a little bit critical when I made the legacy of the Dragonborn video, um, titling it arguably the best mod ever created. Um, one of the reasons why I like that is because I'm a I'm big on uh, MMO, massively multiplayer mm. online games, and I like collecting things. Usually, that's like my biggest thing that I like doing in in, in MMOs. And even today, I still find the time to occasionally play Black Desert Online, Guild Wars 2, and a few others. And um, my main driving factor when I do these things is collecting stuff. So when somebody introduced, or Ice Cream Assassin in particular, when he introduced a full new cell in which you can collect and display all of these things it was like a dream come true for me so i know a lot of people might disagree with that and the story is also great and there's a there's a lot of interesting things technically but it was primarily for the collection element mm -hmm. so yeah i think i got you? into legacy of the dragonborn quite late as well so i didn't get to experience it in my prime when i yeah. probably could have yeah, it was first like uh, for LE, for Legendary Edition, it was like this smaller kind of a hall uh, mm -hmm. with like a centralized area, but now it's like a huge hall of heroes and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So it's 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 like, it was really good at the beginning, but then it was better and then it was even better when it's now for SC and AE. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anyway, Gim, sorry. Gim, okay. go ahead. I don't, <laughs> bro, I don't even know. Um... Obviously, if, if I think about what mods I've downloaded the most, like on Sam. top of my head, it's gonna, huh? Sam. Sam body. It never leaves. I don't, have to, I don't have to re download it. It never leaves the list. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> he's, got, he's got it on like his embedded hard drive. He's got a flash disk just in case. <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, the things like Smim and the unofficial patch, this is boring answers for it. <laughs> yeah, Those yeah, are the but, ones that I've just yeah. visually. I've seen those mod pages the most, mm -hmm. but if I think about mods that I f like that got me to think like, holy, sh holy crap, this is something. I guess I have to start with playing the Grey Cowlet and Nocturnal for the first time. Oh, I never got to play that mod. But, uh, I regret it. So I never did really. I had it yeah. installed for like ten different playthroughs, and because yeah. the way I play mods, I'd always like save it till I felt it was right in my character or whatever. Yep. And yep. I never got around to it. I'd always get the quest ready, and I'd be like, "Okay, I'll do that at some point." And I never did it. So I had it installed all the time. I just never got around to doing it. How, so, like, how is the how is the mod like? How's the like voice acting in the story? And, yeah, uh, so and that's that's what I'm about, the part I'm about to get to. So the whole experience <laughs> is, at the time it was game changing. It was something <laughs> entirely new. But then you come across the first character and the voice actor, and it's a guy <laughs> with like the shittiest mic going, "Hello." So, <laughs> I think, you, I think it was the Wait, monologue first. Wait, he goes first. like, what, Kim? Sorry? <laughs> no, no he, has, he has an accent. He's like, hello, the great cowl of the turn. <laughs> Is he a Khajiit or...? No, he's, it's just it's him speaking into oh, his microphone. It's, okay. And he's well, you, okay, well, you can't make fun, okay? <laughs> it's it's just, just, just a dude. I just remember that, like, I just, just I'd laughed so hard uh, when, I, when I experienced That's... that that I just, it just sits... It just sits deeply rooted in my yeah. heart. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. if I think about the mod that like otherwise got me to think this is crazy, I have to say um, probably EVG Conditional Idols. I just remember seeing when oh, that wow. released for the first time. Uh, because one thing I I loved when I played Witcher for the first time in games like that is when the character just starts like I don't know. In Black Flag, when you walk close to the water, he starts like touching the water. Mm. Or when you walk close to bushes, he starts touching bushes. I just love 
things like that, animation like that, that adds life into the character and conditional idols with yep. the shield, like when, when they put it above their head to above their head, yeah. cover for the raining. I didn't remember seeing that and thinking like, whoa, this is, this is cool. And yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. actually, yeah. Go I'm on. sorry for laughing, but like I'm actually losing it over here and barely controlling myself because when you were talking about the gray cowl of Nocturnal, I totally know what you talk about, what you're talking about, and that's why I don't like quest mods. Mm. <laughs> because there's always that one guy that is absolutely butchering the voice acting and just ruins the role playing. But that mod is really you. old, like uh, <laughs> yeah, old. yeah, it's That's old. Super old. Because like at the start, obviously now you have people who go really out of the way to like hire mm -hmm. professional actors, and and most of us have decent mics nowadays anyway, because it's so accessible compared to like mm -hmm. seven years ago. So mm -hmm. these big quest uh, quest uh, mods back in the day were so high in quality technically, but then you get to the voice acting and it just absolutely pulls you out it's of the game. It's not that old. It's, it's actually not that old. Are you looking on SSD though? Yeah, I'm you looking might on be LE. Like... LE. And it says 2015. Okay. I, mean, I mean, that's pretty se old. Seven years, that's pretty old. I mean, I guess that's old. That was <laughs> yeah. 15 years. That's yeah, like yeah. three three years, three, four years into the game's uh, existence. <laughs> I don't know, man. The mic quality <laughs> made it sound like fucking 1995. <laughs> well, the, the problem is, is like when that mic quality is mixed in with good ones, you notice it more as well. For example, yeah, like the yeah. first time I played Legacy of the Dragonborn, the voice acting on Orion was really good. And then there was like yep. some bouncer dude who you hire and there's like a quest with him. And he just had like, I don't even think the voice acting was bad. Just the mic quality was so awful that it just, you couldn't take it seriously. Like you just yep. be like skip through the dialogue. Like I don't care, yep. I'll read the subtitles. And yep. I think they uh, eventually went back yep. and re-recorded a lot of the dialogue and improved on it. They recorded everything. Yeah. One one of my biggest criticism was Latoria's uh, voice actor. Mm. Um, that's basically the Khajiit who is part of the the this guild uh, that that you create as a as a I guess a, a dragonborn or whatever, <clears throat> and it's a female Khajiit, and. I think it was voiced by a guy. I, I genuinely don't know. I okay, so I, I, I might actually ask Ice Cream, Ice Cream Assassin because of curiosity, but it, it was a guy trying to be a female Khajiit, and it was really, really bad. Like this no is offense. Be really insulting if it is just like, a normal woman. Doing I, it. <laughs> like I, no offense, genuinely, I mean nothing bad by it. It's just it was really bad, and then they <laughs> came back to it. And um, actually, good, the good comparison that you can make is you can watch. Gopher's videos, he does Let's Plays, and he still plays on a version 4 point something Legacy of the Dragonborn, which is still the old one, and still mm. uses the old voice acting files, and you can compare uh, Latoria then with actual new version 5 one, and you will see that the, not only that the actor has been changed, but the mic quality is a lot better as well. I also want to give a special shout out to the Forgotten City, because yes. that... I actually didn't think of that at the time when you asked me what's a favorite mod, but that mod actually melted my brain with how yep. quality it was. I, I mean, I say at the time, even now, if you play it for the first time, it it's even it's more just the technicality of how they lay out the mod. Yep. It's so different and it's never even been done mm. similar again. And that was probably one of the first mods, big mods to ever come out ever. Yep. And it's still nothing's topped it in terms of like story and technicality. Um, yeah, of just how they use the engine. But yeah, that, that the one I, there's a reason a, why that mod became a game. Let's just put that. Is yeah. that the one you had like a playthrough with, like the cinematic? Yeah, play? yeah, yeah. I actually like. I remember when you mentioned Forgotten City. I remember because, you know, you kind of when you play Skyrim in its original form in its vanilla state, you understand that the storyline is not like the most greatest thing ever. It's it's a pretty basic story, you know, happy happy ending and all of that stuff. Um, I remember playing Forgotten City and I didn't necessarily understand what, what was going on. Not because I didn't take in the story, but I just didn't think it was possible mm -hmm. that somebody create some somebody can create such a good storyline with such a um, good technical implementation in an old game like Skyrim. And I mm -hmm. didn't truly appreciate it until I actually sat back, finished the story and took it in for like a good hour and to, to, to actually realize what just happened. Because in my brain, no, this is not possible. This can't happen in Skyrim, Skyrim's engine. So yeah, definitely one of the top ones, I would agree. Even though I don't like quest mods, definitely one of the mm -hmm. top ones. I don't even know. I haven't looked into it technically <clears throat> in the creation kit or anything, but I don't even know now how they would have done some of the stuff that they've done in that quest. Mm. And it's been out for as long as Skyrim's been out, as far as I'm aware yeah. at this point. 
Yeah, I don't think they made any changes. I mean, it was it was mostly working fine, so I don't think yeah. they did anything. Which is also very rare for mods as well. Like, it came out, it was insane, the story was amazing, the technicality was amazing, and it most, well, as far as I was concerned, it worked as good as anything could do in that, so. Yeah. Yeah, that was insane. Speaking of okay. quest mods, I'm really mad that I haven't tried the, uh, what's, what's it called? The one with the new land? You, I like, download... Falscar. No, no, you download it on Steam. It's like a whole new, pretty much a Burn, whole new game in the Skyrim Burns engine. Tooth, maybe something with E, 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 mm. E, 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 I actually thought, Gim, you're going to say that one of your favorite mods is the pit fighting mod. Because I remember watching your videos and you mentioned that one of your favorite top mods is the, the pit fighter revamped, was it called? Or something no. like that? We have yeah, the arena of, uh, and then you battle like other NPCs and whatever. Yeah, and a lot of fun with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I so think I played um, like Enderol for maybe a week or two and then I just... I think it was because I was ba I was babysitting. I was house sitting my friend's house for like a week or two while he was on holiday, um, and I was like, I brought my computer around and I just installed it then because I was like, oh, now's a good time to play it. And I think just af I was playing it for about two weeks and then after that I just never for whatever reason touched it again because I just forgot after I moved that I had it or whatever. So I, would, yeah. I would actually really like to go back and play it, and I think it would be good for all of us in a way because the c annoying bit about making videos is. Like we said, you don't really want to go play Skyrim after that. So Enderal would be an amazing way to like get that same feeling of playing Skyrim again, but not have the weight of like I've got to make a video or I feel like this is work or anything like that. And it's that. completely separate as well. Mm -hmm. It's like a completely different thing. Yeah. And I like hope we have a sort aspect. of um, a sort of same feeling with like the modding projects, like Beyond Skyrim, um, Sky Oblivion, those type of things when they come. Yeah. Out. Now that you mentioned it, uh, we can actually address uh, to. A, I guess I can make a semi. Uh, interesting segue, but it's also related to modding. I know a lot of people have mentioned uh, Skyrim together. I actually never asked you guys, um, even behind behind the scenes, what you guys' thoughts are on on the mod, and should we actually like do something with it? What do you guys think? I think we definitely should do something. I tested it. I spent a long time trying to figure it out and things, um, uh, and I managed to get it working with my current modded setup but it crashed as soon as i left riverwood i, so, I imagine we'd make like a, a short list for ourselves right yeah like, that's yeah, yeah, like if we're gonna do yeah. it you'd have to make it on a new thing and just like keep it simple because mine yeah. was way too intricate to be able yeah. to use with that um yeah i, I would love to i mean mm. it depends well we couldn't make i don't know could we we could we make like actual interesting like good yeah, videos we could. You I've think already it imagined work? it in my head, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> I can give yeah. just my two cents, like, really, really briefly. Um, for me, Sci uh, Skyrim is a single-player experience. Um, I will never be able to take the, the what Skyrim is still trying to present to the person seriously if I'm doing it in a multiplayer environment. Mm -hmm. But if we're just doing it for fun, yeah, you know, yeah, or we're looking fun. to, like, create something maybe interesting, we can also make an interesting video using Skyrim together. I definitely Hiding be in up bushes, for that. shooting each other. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we can do a serious playthrough because it just doesn't work, yeah, yeah. really. I think, we like, do have fun things you could do... One. Say again? Yeah, we can just, like, play the game but have fun. Just yeah, or just around. do, like, challenges, like we said. Like, yeah. oh, we've got to be able to... Like, it may be, like... If we, I think there's PvP in it, you can turn it on. So we could yeah. do, like, we have an hour to try and loot as much stuff as we can and get as better gear, and then we meet <laughs> in the middle and try and fight or something like that, right? Yeah, and yeah, see yeah, who yeah, wins. Yeah, yeah. So we can yeah, do, like, it's... fun videos like that. That sounds um, like a video that would pop up, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but the, pro <laughs> the problem is, and we figured this out, Gim, is you can get a really good video idea, but just trying to figure out how to, like, say that in a short thumbnail and title is really hard, or even, like, discuss it at the start. Because we had a video that we made together, and the idea was really fun, and I think the execution was really fun. But it's so, like, the idea was way too complicated to be able to, like, mm -hmm. just present to people. Even at the start of the video, I tried to say it really quickly, this is what we're going to do. But some people might not even understand even half of the stuff we're saying there. Um, mm -hmm. And then trying to make a thumbnail and, like, title that, like, what do you even title some of that stuff? Um, but at least, at least with Skyrim Together, I feel like Skyrim Together is still kind of trending. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I see channels where like random channels posting just clips of Skyrim together and it gets like a good amount of views. Yeah. I think if, if we got on that within like the next one or two like months, we could. I have uh, I have like no knowledge of, of how it works, of how it's supposed to be set up. But if we do decide to go through with this, I can look at it and see. Uh... It's surprisingly simple. The, pr- the problem is it's simple to install. The issue is connecting to each other. You either have to like open up your Wi-Fi routers and like do the whatever it's called when you're fucking, I don't know, some technical shit where you like allow people to join your router or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you try and like get someone to host a server and there is a website that does servers for free um, and they you just kind of like activate it and uh, if no one's active for 20 minutes it deactivates and things like that so we can use them. but if we can find a secure way to make sure we can like connect to each other, that would probably be better or we'll run our own server. But I tried for all day to try and set up a server and I was like, I, only me can join. So I just end up using the uh, default ones after that. But yeah, it's pretty right. simple to install all things considered. So it's basically something that we would have to like look into it a little bit more seriously mm-hmm. if you're going to go through with this. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I, I think there's like public servers as well, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But yeah, we can, we can have a look and... Um, if people have ideas, I'll ask again. We'll see if we actually get <laughs> yeah, some time. responses. <laughs> if anyone has any uh, fun ideas for Skyrim Together videos, um, challenges, we could do like a playthrough, I guess, but it you know depends how like exciting that's going to be. Um, you can leave them below and uh, maybe we'll go through them next time. We'll read them out. There we go. It's a call to action. Leave your call comment to. and we'll read them live next week. Okay. Yeah. If you don't put any in there, your own worst enemy. We're still going to do the segment, but we're going to say none of your comments just to make it awkward on you guys. So, <laughs> just to call you out. Yes. So we're, we're yeah. making you do it now. Type yeah. now, right now. I'm looking at you. <laughs> say, um, whoever's editing this, don't cut this out now. I'm giving them a chance to write it. <laughs> just make like an awkward pause in editing or whatever. <laughs> and you're done. Thank you for your comment. Next, let's move on. Okay. Well, before we Actually, move on, boys, I really have to pee. So does anyone, right. does anyone else have you to pee? You peed before. You yeah, the one but, that said right. pee. I guess we will, we this, will cut this. This one's thing. like sitting right beside me and I'm drink, I can't stop drinking it. Um, I'm going to go yeah. get a drink then because mine's empty. I should have held you tight. I never should have let you go. I did know nothing. I was stupid. I was foolish. I was lying to myself. Wait, you guys can hear me now because all you, both of you have headsets. So you can enjoy my voice while you're peeing. Okay, so while, while we are on a, on a modding topic, before we move in, move on to something that is not related to Skyrim and modding, I actually just wanted to touch up something briefly as well. Um, we did shout out a few people who had very good modding ethics, and I wanted to do this to another person that definitely deserves it, who I wanted to include in the last episode, but I didn't. Uh, this is related to the current modding news, and he just released a <clears throat> mod called Precision Accurate Melee Collisions. Mm. It's a dude that also made uh, true directional movement. This is probably going to be another one of those revolutionary creations. And I made, if you're listening to this, huge shout out to you because not only you create amazing mods, but you go out of your way to uh, keep it on Nexus, as is uh, as is something that we mentioned last time. And also you fix it until it's as bug free as possible. So just wanted to like plug him in. His name is Urshin. And he does an incredible job creating some amazing, amazing mods, and he also keeps them on Nexus. And on top of it all, he makes sure they're all working in as best possible shape as possible. So yeah, what That's a just fucking some... Chad! Am I right, boy? Are we doing? Chad. Are we doing the like the weekly mod after <laughs> <Yeah. shout out laughs> <laughs> Every week we shout out one mod. That's after. a segment no. we've carved out now. Well done, Sim. Yeah, You've yeah set no, I would. I wanted to mention him last episode, but I forgot because he was like the first thing that pops in my mind when I think about awesome modding ethics because yeah. he just goes out of his way to just like fix everything as much as he can. And uh, yeah, so he does so, a shout out uh, for sure. To all mothers near and far, if you want to <laughs> shout out on the Tryhards podcast by Sergeant Gimblinio Heavybird or Sin Gaming, just you keep can send. It. $200 to, to PayPal in the description. And your dreams will come true. We just open PayPal and Patreon. And there you go. There you go. In an investment, you know, so all 2,000 people can see it. Okay, I wanted to bring another topic. Um, I don't know if you guys have saw because it's more lighthearted, but it's also something that I kind of got a little bit upset by uh, because I'm so 
you know, smart that I get upset by uh, obscure and un <laughs> irrelevant things. There was a uh, video, I don't know if you saw, <clears throat> but there was a video of a guy, uh, I guess he makes like these meme or joking videos or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this video is, a. Uh, it's again, I'm not interested in politics, but it's just what it is. It's, it's Joe Biden in Skyrim. And it's hilarious. I absolutely yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's the Twitter thing, right? Yeah, I absolutely yeah, lost it. It's hilarious. You want to watch it. But yeah, shortly, uh, the guy, original creator, right now, if you take a look at this video, if you go there, it's 30k views. It uh, deserves more. And if you go to some more popular post, which just took that video and reposted it, they have over, they have over a million views already. So mm -hmm. just a quick... I guess public service announcement or something like that as a creator and somebody who used to be not a creator just a just a regular spectator or a viewer if you are looking at something on twitter or, or any social media the best way that you can support the creator is to try the original one and if you're reposting somebody's stuff make sure you create or, or sorry not create but credit the original creator because that's only fair it's a little bit upsetting to see a person who went out of his way to make this get only 30k and somebody who just reposted his stuff get a million on twitter yeah it, it's sort of there's a weird issue with it as well with only the ones that do well um get shouted at in a way so if some rando re-uploads like a video that someone made and only their mates see it like their 10 followers or whatever no one's ever gonna be like oh that's bad ethics or anything it's only when they're big yeah. creators or something when they actually get uh like the, the the backlash from it i guess yeah so I, I don't even know how you go about i guess you don't it's just sort of a all you can do is talk about it but it's just sort of a weird gray area of like yeah. making video and video content because um, maybe that dude that it blew up on is just i don't know about them they might be like a big creator or whatever or someone that has a popular page but maybe they did have 10 followers and that just popped off on the algorithm yeah um so it's a weird one is like well i don't know it, how how do you relate that to for example people watching videos on stream um well that's the same thing or not yes yeah, so, so so okay so i i don't want to sound like i'm just trying to police this behavior i'm not like saying the person who reposted it is the horrible human being or something like that obviously they didn't know it's gonna blow up they just probably did it because they want to share it with their friends or whatever i'm just saying that it's a little bit upsetting to see not the original creators get the credit they deserve and the best way that we uh, on an individual level can ensure that that happens is if we just create or credit the original creator once we post something especially if we know the source where it comes from that's all but to your point or to your question I'm not big on reaction content uh, or if it happens i would basically do what Asmongold does if you guys watch him from time to time not necessarily a regular viewer but i pop in from time to time and whenever he does reaction content he not only goes out of his way to uh, go through the sponsor segment and watch the whole of it so if the video is sponsored by i don't know raid shadow legends he would watch the whole segment and pretend like he cares and then once uh, he watches the whole video he links the the creator and the video in the chat and usually these creators end up gaining tens if not hundreds of thousands of subscribers in return so i think that's there is ethic. like a weird uh back and forth of like the scales of if if you get signal boosted by someone that's larger than you of course like more people are seeing your stuff it's getting shared more that type of thing but it's on the same level you're being basically just being like used for their gain in a way so it's like how much the actual creator values just being seen i guess because yeah. if you spend a lot of time on a video, it will probably sting a lot more if someone just re-uploads it and doesn't say anything to you because you spent like months on that or something like that. For me personally, I, I honestly don't care. <laughs> like if someone wants to repost my stuff, it's all the same to me. But that's just me, right? My view on the internet is, is that it's just a complete free space and it would just be fun if everyone just looked at it that way. I yeah, know. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a fair point to have. And like I said, like I'm not trying to be like an internet police or something. It's mm -hmm. just, it would be a good ethic just to credit the original creators. That's it. Because sometimes they deserve that algorithm boost or whatever that may be continuing but. on that uh, streamer thing you talked about uh i know um there, there have been there, there's been streamers that um they've, they've straight up just like they they stream an anime and just watch it on stream like a whole season mm -hmm. or something and 
Japanese like bis or like uh, what are they called? I remember like, that. Yeah, they're very well. They're very strict when it comes to their own mm -hmm. stuff, right? They don't like people reacting to it and etc. But at the same time, though, when XQC with eighty thousand live viewers is watching uh, Hunter x Hunter, it's an anime. Mm -hmm. Isn't that somewhat of a, po a positive? He's eighty thousand live viewers. Like maybe that's a little bit of a different because the creator behind the anime would be a corporation i yeah. guess maybe we're less like le less inclined to be i don't know it's again like burn said it's a gray area and i'm not trying to change anybody's behavior god forbid i'm just saying if you are consciously sharing somebody's content and you would like that to um be credited to the original creator i think the good ethic is just to let people know where the source comes from that's all well, myself, I always make sure to credit people. Like I, I've, I've even like mentioned your your guys' videos on my own channel before, and I always yeah. okay. credit your guys. I credited um, Arctic Scrolls ones because they had like a cool, good overall video on mm -hmm. a certain quest mod, and even mod authors. Like I always make sure to just uh, uh, say their name a couple of times. And the, I think if people just do that in general when it comes to creators, right? You don't have to necessarily be like. If it's Sony or X or Microsoft, you don't really have. I don't think they care if you say their name. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to creators, it's always just good to give that little yeah. bit of credit in the video yeah, to the individual guy. Yeah, just yeah, trying to like, that's... especially when we know what it's like to spend a lot of time doing stuff and not make that much or whatever the hell. And yeah. it adds a sense of uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like uh, it adds adds something like genuine to the video as well. Mm -hmm. um, like let's say you're just you're talking about a topic and you're like. Uh, you, someone made a video and you just straight up like got that on your screen like not addressing that in the video just comes off to me as a little bit fake if that makes mm -hmm. sense like if I was talking about it myself I, I would be like oh yeah here's a video this person edited that showcases this in a very good way mm -hmm. it's just simple stuff like that I think a lot of that as well um, and a lot of the reasons why we have shouted each other out all at the beginning things like hmm, don't do that much anymore but <laughs> at, like anytime we do that i think one of the things i'm proudest of with the channel and with just like where we're where we are now is the community around it and i mean that like genuinely i don't mean like just my heavy burns community i mean like being part of the skyrim community the skyrim modding community and it i, I genuinely believe from the start and i still do now that everyone doing well helps everyone mm -hmm. there's i really don't think there's competition in like can i make this video first or like uh, i need to make the best one ever so people know i'm whatever it's like if the more people the more creators there are doing well the more the community is going to do well and the more people are going to be there for everyone i don't think someone watches a skyrim video and they see like sin and heavy burns on the timeline they go I'm only gonna watch one. Which one will it be? Who has the better thumbnail? It's just like, if they like both of us, they'll watch both of us. If they have, they just want to watch one, they'll just watch one. But it's um, also think, none of yeah. us three would be where we are if it weren't for each other. Yeah, of course, pushing yeah, absolutely. each other. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is that is on point. Like my, we talked about this last episode. Like there's so many things that I've learned, and there's so many things you guys helped me with that it's actually mind blowing. There was a few times where I actually said to Shay, like, why is he doing this? <laughs> Legitimately, I said to Shay, why is he helping me so much? Like, genuinely. Like, we don't know, we're not friends in real life. I guess it's for Balkan standards, that's a little bit strange. Because mm -hmm. people are a little bit selfish here. Self-centered, focus on their own gain rather than helping others. So, yeah, definitely a good point. Like, I guess uh, helping each other... It's just, I just don't want people to think that this whole subject was started because I'm frustrated at somebody or trying to police mm -hmm. other people's behavior. All, all I am saying is that sometimes it's a little bit, you know, to me, frustrating when I see the person who put an effort into something doesn't get the credit they deserve. That's all. So, yeah. I actually wanted to, uh, wanted to relay our plans to the audience uh, as far as... Um, a group or a tryhards and individually so what would be your plans for the channel Gim? because i know that you mentioned that uh, you know you're a student you're at uni you're very busy and uh, you have some stuff to tend to uh, in real life let's say a hypothetical example is that you've taken care of all of that you finished your study mm -hmm. you're financially stable 
could we expect more content from you and what are your plans in general that's far into the future man like <laughs> <laughs> like i i want to i want to be able to say that the next that you can expect more content from me the next month like that's i don't i, don't, I haven't really thought that far to be honest okay i, I want to somehow be able to figure out how to push out just more content with the time that i have as soon as possible and and uh yeah that, that's I have really you got that over before. the perfection itch yet because i know kind of yes uh, like you especially were very like we were like i'll just make 10 minute videos instead or 15 rather than like everything has to be a 30 minute video he's like no it has to be this because i want yeah. it and we're like well you can still make a good video just make it shorter and it'll take you less time to make and you're like no it has to be like do you think you've got over that now or is that some still something you uh, I mean, it, uh, it will always be a part of me, no mm -hmm. matter what. But I think, um, I think, I think I've found a way to. Uh, right now, with the video I'm making right now, I feel like it. The, the, the stuff that I'm making is simple enough that it doesn't take the most amount of time in the world, and I'm also happy with it. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'll that's always the, be a critic. That's the like assassin's a, video or sneaking video, right? He talked about. Yeah, it's a stealth uh, video. Stealth video. Yeah, wow, you got the scoop right here, right now. <laughs> we'll see you Wait, in so, six was months. I when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> was I not supposed to say that? I mean, I don't really <laughs> care, but okay, sorry. I, I like, I, I like the, I like the shot of the thumbnail and the topic, but <laughs> fuck. <laughs> okay, so you, you got oh, a clip fine, now. <laughs> Sin leak skims secret video. <laughs> I forgot this is on camera. What am I but gonna not, do now? That, that's also like the genuine Editor cut. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. The genuine vibe, like, a genuine video for myself, the vibe would be, like, the way I'm, I, I normally speak. Like, there's a little bit of, like, a humoristic, like, tangle to it, right? So, like, light-hearted content like that is... It shouldn't be too hard to make, and it's it's what I want to make, so, yeah. Listen, in an I, ideal world, we would all spend six months on a video and have one video that we're always, like, really happy with, that we've perfected, that's 30 minutes long or something. But that unfortunately doesn't yeah. isn't how YouTube works unless you're already like huge or something like that. So I want to be able to I want to be able to say by the end of this year that I've posted seven videos. That's not happening, that's... But good luck. Oh, <laughs> you have six videos to make then, right? Or was it five to get to that number? Do you count the Dev Diary as one? Huh? Do you count the oh. Dev Diary as one? <laughs> not really, but now that I think <laughs> about it, yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> no, you're already more than halfway through the year, and you've still got six videos to make if you don't count the dev diary. So five. Let's let's get make it easier on your five videos. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, okay, even sure. five videos, it's a stretch for you, man. Because okay, but that's my challenge, though. All I'll, right. I'll no, even I'll, well, I'll even neglect. But hold on, Jim. Do you remember what we said in the last pod? By the way, for everyone watching. Yeah, I did. But but okay. Yeah. Okay. We said that, but at the same time, <laughs> I edited the whole thing, and I also made. The whole fucking layout. Yeah, that's so, true. That's I true. Did, okay. We didn't account for how much time that was going to take. No, we did. And you said it wouldn't take a lot of time. And it did. <laughs> yeah, then it kind of did. did yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually curious, uh, Burns. You, you've, uh, you've asked him that question. You said where you are at when it comes to like perfecting things versus just getting something out there. Where are you at as far um, as that's concerned? I think... Something that I've done recently, which has helped a lot in a way, sort of, is uh, I have someone helping me shoot videos now, which means I cannot, that to a certain degree I can, but I can't be as anal over every single angle, over every single action and shot and timing as I was before. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons why I did that in the first place was because I want to be able to actually make videos at a reasonable pace rather than once every like six months yep. or something stupid like that yeah um i think that helps a lot in that regard I, th there's still a part of me like when i get something that i'm not happy with there's a part of me that's like shall i just use it or do i do it myself or do i get them to reshoot or something like that and at the very start at least i i, I was like reshoot because I was basically teaching them what to do and how to actually shoot the way I do and things like that. So there was a lot of things to learn. Um, but now I think I'm sort of settling uh, in a place where I can just make videos now, I think. 
I, I've, I've started to actually like project management out my stuff now, which is a new for me. Um, when you have someone else working with you like full time, right? you kind of need that because when you're working on your own, you'll know Sin and Gim is like, you just do things when you decide and you're like, oh, I'll do that later. Or, I'll do this when I get to it. I just want to make this and whatever. When you have someone else that needs something to do every day, you have to be organized. You can't just wake up, and especially when you're on different sleeping schedules, like I'm awake in the middle of the night and they're awake in the day. I, I can't just be like, I want this now, do it this. I've just decided this now. I have to go through and plan the video at the beginning and send it off. Yeah. As far as like actual content, I am I think I'm settling now on one big video a month, and that's rich considering I haven't uploaded in a month, but I was away for a while, so leave me alone. One big yeah. video a month, and then one half as big video a month. Um, and then if I can sneak things in in the middle that are easy to make, and I think we'll do well, then I'll do that. Yeah. Um, but you yeah, a... I, 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 go on. Yeah, I've said this before. You had a good, you remember, I've, I've talked with you before about this. You had that good period once when you were doing mm -hmm. those 10 minute videos, and you were, you were posting every week. It was like a month. Do you remember that? Like, uh, you did a combat one, the dinosaur one. Uh, the, yeah, uh, the dinosaur one did horribly. That time. Yeah, but I'm saying you can't though, talk about you, that one. Those were like 10 minute, 11, 12 minute ish videos. <laughs> I mean, it didn't do and well because it was a shit idea, not because it was yeah. a bad video. Yeah, it was a really I, shit I, idea. I, <laughs> dinosaurs are cool. Who the fuck was dinosaur his guy? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's true. I remember, like, I watched the video, I was like, this is very well edited, this looks visually no, pleasing, it's just who fucking gives a shit about well, it. Well, yeah, actual, an actual good example, the one you did about, well, is it something like five mods that will make your lore better, or something oh, like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So something that I, I've always known, and is very enhanced when it comes to um, making videos on YouTube, <laughs> is I sort of need some sort of push to get things up consistently. Um, and at that time, it was, I was in, and I'll just openly say because I don't care, I was in a six month contract with a sponsor who have to make a video like at a certain time every month. And, I, and that was around the Dragonborn video. So all I wanted to do was make the Dragonborn video. It was right after Dawnguard. It was the next video I started after Dawnguard. And that, that was the video I wanted to make next. But I had this contract where I had to make a video every month and the Dragonborn was nowhere near done at the end of every month. And I wasn't going to rush it and just like poop it out being crap. So then I had to like make other videos in between working on it, but then that would run over towards like the actual date it needs to be uploaded. So they were also cut short as well. So that run of videos that you're talking about, Gim, weirdly, a lot of them did really well, but I was never happy with like any of them. A yeah, lot that's of, the biggest. Yeah, yeah it's always the, the compromise um, with uploading them. And even some of the most recent ones, when you have time constraints on, with sponsors and things like that uh there's some things that just get cut because you don't have time to do it you just have to get it out on that day or whatever and even like even ones that do well and don't do well so like those two videos that are both shorter and both more simple there was a vampire video and a sound effects video the sound effects one i always knew was never going to do great because it's sound effects and it's a very very niche and not that exciting area of modding but that was more of a training video for the person helping me shoot videos so i could teach them like it's an easy video to make most of it's sound effects which i'm doing in editing anyway so shooting that isn't that important it's more about what you hear and things like that so that was like the easy video to make um but the vampire one was equally as simple to make and had time constraints and there was like parts <laughs> that didn't even have like sound effects and even when i rendered it through the parts that did have sound effects it turned out they didn't render properly so you didn't even hear them from like most of the video but that one did really well. So it's a really it's it, it's a really tough challenge, I think, for all of us when you have a video that you don't really like that does well, because you're like, the ones that I do like, are they even worth putting that much effort into? Because they're gonna do yeah. the same or less sometimes as the ones that like you get rushed on and you just like, ah, oh, screw it, whatever, put it out. And I think that comes down to more of the video idea and topic rather than the actual video itself. Yeah. If the idea of the video is good, if the video is crap, it doesn't matter. It's going to do well anyway. Yep. And I yeah, think I need I to get better at video ideas, to be honest with you. Because sometimes I just think any idea will do because I know I can make it good in the video form. But that's well, not the case because people don't watch them in the first place if they're not a good idea. 
Yeah, but like I don't agree with you saying you you don't have good ideas. It's just like there's only so many ideas you can have within this niche thing that we're doing, right? And uh, every single video that you make, in my personal opinion, is a good idea except for the dinosaur one. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I like legit. the dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> I mean, people like dinosaurs, but who fucking wants them in Skyrim anyway? Yeah, but yeah, let's just, not okay, sure. harp on that. Like, generally speaking, I thought the audio idea was great, and the video was great as well. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's one of those things is what the audience wants to watch, right? And sometimes you happen to um, combine the two, which is low effort video, but great topic that people have huge interest in, mm -hmm. and you hit that jackpot, and it gets a lot of views, right? One of my um, most popular videos is the video I literally put three hours in. My combat, my first yep. combat video, I put three hours into that, not including the render. Which, by the way, for anyone watching, is basically like a scene for us now. Like it takes, yeah. like it takes us three hours to record like one shot or something. One like shot. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's it's just people like combat. People care about combat. It also happened to hit the algorithm jackpot as well. And so it's, I guess, balance between the two. And sometimes what you said is so true. Sometimes you just sit there and you're like, man, this video that I barely spent any effort on is getting like almost a million views. Mm -hmm. And I'm spending like now 50 plus hours on this single video. And it's not hitting, n not even close to that. Sometimes so they line up and it's really satisfying when yeah. they do. When you when make a really up. good video, like yes. my anniversary video, I was really happy with it. I still like it to this day. I, yes. I spent a reasonable time on it. It wasn't like too long that I got uh, hated it, but it was long enough that I felt happy with it. And then it does well. I'm like, that's the the best feeling when you do that. Yeah. But then you have videos that you don't spend long on, they do well and you're like, I'm happy it's doing well, but why did this do well and not the one that I actually liked? <laughs> yeah, like like for example, that the best example I guess would be Gim's Odin video. He spent God knows how much time into it, but it also received what it deserves. Yeah, but you hated so, it by the end of you uploading it because we had to force you to finish it because you were like, I just don't even yeah. want to work on it anymore. Because he worked yeah. on it for like months. <laughs> he was yeah, sick I of was it watching it. tired of it. But uh, that video, I kind of knew was going to do well. Like before, even if I, even if, if it was a bad video, like the editing was just terrible, I, it would still do good yeah, because of just like a, magic. the yeah. thumbnail titled uh, whole shebang. My, my latest one with the tree video, I knew that that wouldn't do well. But I generally just wanted to make a tree mod video because I was curious as to what tree mod I was going to use. So mm -hmm. that's how yeah. I. So I, didn't really me. Care. I was waiting for you to post your tree mod video so I could see what trees I wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your video was like the reason why I swapped the Blabo stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Legit. Like I watched the video, I was like, oh, man, these trees are pretty good. I'm going to swap. So I've never, I, can't I, talk... actually, can't actually, can't actually think of a video where I've been disappointed. Because I feel like every time I've had a certain expectation of a video, it's hit that mark. And when I haven't, it hasn't hit that mark. Well, you've also not relied on videos as your, like, income, right? No, like, true. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, as, as much as it pains us to have this be the situation, views do matter, which is unfortunate. Um, mm -hmm. You can be as satisfied as you want with a video, but if it doesn't do well, you're not going to do the same thing again because you can't. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to make videos unless you're like, yeah. you spend six months making them and you have like a full time job and things like that. Um, so they kind of have to do well for you to be able to do that again. So when you spend a lot of time on a video and it does well, it feels doubly great because you get that confirmation. like I can do this again. Like I enjoyed making that. I can do something like that again, and then and hopefully it will do well. Like, I like the proof is already there that it can do well. Mm -hmm. Where are you at then, yeah. Sin, with your content oh, creation? Uh, like uh, the reason why I was ask actually asking you is because I'm curious what you have to say because I have no idea where I'm at. Um, like I really like what I've did with my last one, mm -hmm. um, but that was that was a long ass process. That video, that video was sleepless nights, uh, for sure. And I'm making this magic video right now, and I'm at a point where I'm 50% done, 50-60% done. And it's an it's it's just an amazing showcase, at least compared to what I've done in the past. It's just that again, I'm struggling with that thing that I struggle with all the time, which is I want to do something original with each of these magic mods. Mm -hmm. And uh the reason why I was asking you, I don't know, it kind of sounds weird, but because we're friends, I'm trying to like ask you where you guys are at. And if you guys are able to break the ice of maybe like chilling. A little bit and saying you know what i'm just gonna push this out whatever it's like it's gonna be easier for me as well to mm -hmm. enter 
that sphere as well. Because you're saying because you'll feel like if you were doing it and we wasn't, you'd feel like you were slacking. Yeah, like I'm slacking yeah. off. Yeah, mm -hmm. like or I, yeah, that would be the best. That would be the best wording. I, I don't think I can put it better. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'm thinking I'm at a point where I just want to get this magic video out um, because these I besides sneaking playstyle, magic playstyle is my favorite playstyle, and I basically I guess. Um, am reviewing something that I enjoy besides making videos. So mm -hmm. after I get this out, I think I'm going to using various of methods um, besides becoming a dad. <laughs> I have to like just say, you know what? I'm just going to do mod reviews from now on. And it, it is what it is, right? Um, see where, where that ends up because the consistency is going to matter eventually. And we also spoke, all the three of us spoke about, you know, release of Starfield and then yeah, the release of Elder say, Scrolls yeah. 6. Yeah, that's like, basically the area in which all of us, we have to say, all right, we got to increase the amount of uploads. Yeah, like I, we've spoken private about this a bunch and I don't know how much we touched on it in the last podcast, even at all. But honestly, the main reason I'm excited for Starfield and hope to God it does well enough and people yeah. want to actually play it enough that we can make videos on it. But it's it's almost like a weight off your shop. Skyrim is so old, and the type of mod videos that have been out, there's so many over ten years that we have to like, even for our own satisfaction. It's not like oh we have to because we think no one will watch them. It's more like we have to because we want to make like something that's unique and fun and different. Yeah. So you put all this effort into the video because because it needs it. <laughs> Because like yep. just going here's a mod, no one like no one cares anymore. They've been out for ten years. Like the mods can be as cool as you want, but like you can only stay interested in something for so long without it being changed up or doing something different, right? Yeah. Um and when Starfield comes out, as long as it does well, it it, it just lifts that weight off your shoulders already because I've always said to make a good video, you need like a flair, like a good like a good thing about the video. Our good things about our videos is like the editing and the shooting and that thing. Yep. Starfield itself is a new game, especially Elder Scrolls 6 when that comes out. It's a new game. That flair is the game. You don't need yep. anything more on top of that. If you exactly. do, if if the, the day Starfield comes out, the first video I make is like, whoosh, 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 flash yeah. in editing. Everyone's gonna be nope. like, show us a fucking game back. <laughs> like, I just <laughs> yeah, wanna yeah, see yeah. like what you're trying to show me. Like, I don't care about this. I don't care about your <laughs> three minute intro to show us this weapon. Like, just show us the freaking weapon. So yeah. I'm like, I'm really excited <laughs> to just be able to like, make a simple video that I'm happy with just because I'm into Starfield as well. Yeah. Like at the start, we were making worse videos than we are now. One, because, well, because we didn't know how to make as good videos, but also because we were playing the game and we're more into Skyrim than if that makes any sense. Like we right. play Skyrim more than ever now to make videos, but that magic of playing it isn't there anymore. So when yeah. we just see Skyrim, we're seeing like a cinematic tool for us to use to make the video. Mm -hmm. Um Whereas it's back in the like... day, you have that charm of being like, oh, it's in Skyrim, and like, you can actually play it and do these yeah, things. Yeah, we don't yeah. care anymore. Like, as soon as the video's done, we delete all those mods and install the next one, because we have to. We can't like linger around, we play with them, or you'll never get a video. Pretty much, I agree. So I guess we're still at the square one <laughs> until Starfield gets released. We're basically just waiting need... on Bethesda, please. <laughs> <laughs> they Bethesda delayed for it. the sake of us. <laughs> They'll delay it again. They'll delay it till November next year now, because they want that date, and we'll be like, Oh please! <laughs> or like I mean, we talk, or like Sky Oblivion finish, so we can like make videos on that or something. Like something come out that we can make videos on. Yeah, make a simple video about. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we talked about this like last podcast, but it's a little bit concerning. Like when I heard why they delay it, I was like, Oof, it's not good news. This is a little bit concerning because it means that the game might not be at the best possible shape at the moment. And they delay you know, it. Yeah, there was a, I mean, I, I said it in, uh, in a podcast, I don't know if you caught it, but like somebody said uh, insider information came from somebody within Bethesda saying that the reason the video, or oh, sorry, the game was delayed is because they didn't want the same fate of CD Projekt mm -hmm. uh, with Cyberpunk 2077. They were like, Oof, but in a way that's. Trouble. That so. actually brings a bit of comfort because they did delay it. If they said that they wanted to delay it, but they didn't, and it's still coming out in November, and then some insider came out and said we were thinking about delaying it because of these problems, but they were like release yeah, yeah, it anyway, yeah. we would be like, yeah, what yeah. the hell? But now at least like they're delaying it because of that, which means hopefully they'll be addressed or more addressed at least. Yeah, 
I agree, but you do remember Cyberpunk got delayed multiple times, so that's yeah. why I was, I'm concerned, because mm -hmm. it's like, even with the delays, the game was just absolutely broken, especially with consoles at the beginning, so... Fingers crossed everything is fine, because our well, channel is also is dependent be on it. going to be a big one on this game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to be like the largest mod ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least we have things like the unofficial patch, right, though? Like, we can, we can rely on them if the game is <laughs> terribly buggy. Yeah, um, true. So mo yeah. modding might save us. <laughs> I mean, modding, yeah, modding. They they already said they're gonna give us tools. They're gonna give yeah. us everything they gave us for Skyrim. So my worry is not about having a product that is unplayable. It's just that you know, um, popularity. That that first um, impression of a game does so much. Yeah. It's like I know so many people. I speak to so many people. I'm lucky to interact with so many people nowadays because of YouTube and whatever. And I have so many people that I talk to and mention uh, Cyberpunk 2077 too, and they still think it's the worst game ever. Mm -hmm. Or if you talk to somebody that played um, what is it called? No Man's Sky during the release. Upon release. It was like the, the worst first impression ever because it didn't deliver on promises. It was buggy, it was awful. But then if you watch the whole storyline of a No Man's Sky, right now is probably one of the coolest uh, games ever because the guys just said, you know what, we're shutting the door. We are shutting the, the, the social media. We're getting to work mm -hmm. and we're introducing all of these. How many now? 20, 30 DLCs? And the game is incredible now. But you still have people who are completely clueless about it because they got that first impression of a game and they're convinced that the game is still crap because they've gotten that first impression. So that can, obviously my concern that, is that happening to, to Starfield if the, if it doesn't come out in at least somewhat I mean, of a nah. polished shape? The way it works is that these impressions doesn't really come out of people playing it either. It's mostly just a general, like, I'd say like 70% of people who would say that Cyberpunk is a terrible game haven't played it. It's just because of that's the mm -hmm. general opinion. That's yeah, the right had, thing to say. Yeah. Yeah, it had yeah. the flaws, but if you actually play it, it's an enjoyable game for what mm -hmm. it is. Same thing when I didn't play No Man's Sky. I can be the first to admit that I was like, when if someone came up to me when that game came out, together with all the backlash release of that game came with, I would have been like, no, don't buy that game. It's it's terrible. Like it's trash, I, I yeah. didn't, I didn't even try it. It's just then an, an automatic. And also. Thing. Yeah, and also social media YouTubers as well amplify mm. that message further so people think that it's something bit worse than it is. And I'm about to annoy a lot of people. <laughs> Fallout 76 <laughs> also ain't that bad, okay? It's not <laughs> oh, that <boy>. bad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, people's yeah. like, it's the fucking worst thing ever. They just did it as a cash grab. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, it's not that bad. But it came out at the worst possible time maybe ever because people... Okay, so no one was, was expecting a big Bethesda game to be released that year, mm -hmm. but still people were like, maybe we can get a teaser of this and that, and then they still, they're still they like, oh, Fallout 76! <laughs> and then you're like, didn't we just get Fallout 4, and isn't this kind of worse? And this so. was on the same showcase where they revealed the Elder Scrolls 6, like, we're working on it trailer, right? So yeah. like, everyone's like, Elder Scrolls 6, and Fallout 76? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes the, the the marketing strategy also matters a lot. Like mm -hmm. that also reminds me of the Diablo story, because like you know, Diablo three came out a while back, and everybody enjoyed it. There was also that drama with Auction House or whatever. But it's a good game. Everybody enjoys it right now, especially after everything has been polished, the Auction House been removed, and all of that stuff. And then now everybody's in is in the anticipation for Diablo four, and these guys have a BlizzCon, which is their own, you know, gathering or whatever, and everybody is excited last stage big group big crowd and they release a mobile game or announce a mobile game <laughs> hey guys here's diablo immortal a mobile game it's like wait really seriously mm -hmm. you couldn't do i don't know we are working on diablo 4 you can expect that this is what we have so far we can't show too much oh and by the way we have this mobile game as well it's like that way you kind of alleviate that negativity but i guess maybe not even a good example because diablo made 100 million dollars in the past month so well, I think they, I mean, I don't actually know much about it, so I'm probably talking out my ass here, but didn't they do a mobile game because the Chinese and Japanese market for mobile games is absolutely ginormous now? Yeah, it's not it's even, insane. it's not a secret. Did they just see some uh, tower or something game had freaking Orlando uh, Bloom and it's in the trailer, like a CGI like a tower scene. defense thing. Yeah, yeah, he's, and he's like, it looks like a movie. He's like swinging a sword around. Like, how much of a budget do these yeah. freaking? Uh, it's crazy to I think mean, about. 
We as know, very tiny. We get sponsored by Raid. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Like we as very very tiny channel get a good chunk of that because these games just make a lot of money. I mean, mm -hmm. Diablo Mortal received probably the biggest backlash that I've that I've witnessed in in gaming history, besides maybe No Man's Sky and a few others. And maybe Cyberpunk 2077, yeah. but that's because Cyberpunk's marketing budget was so big. That game was everywhere, that the expectations were so high that there was no way they were going to meet it anyway. But Diablo Mortal is up there as far as backlash. It didn't matter. $100 million mm -hmm. in the past month and, and growing. It's one of the most downloaded games on, on Google Play Store and Apple Store. And uh, it's probably going to continue growing because they're probably going to add more, uh, more DLCs and whatnot. And if you guys follow the news if not briefly the monetization that game is so predatory that it's ridiculous but you sit there and see you see how much money they make and you're like can you blame them people still mm -hmm. buy this crap so Wait, they're gonna go where the market is and if people are still buying yeah. all the stuff then yeah as much as your morals may not be like it's bad they're gonna do it anyway let's be honest. yeah it's like but a it's game like getting... that's not gonna flop or do you want to finish what you had to say? <laughs> Briefly, it's like getting mad at, uh, at EA for releasing FIFA in 2022 that is the same <laughs> as FIFA 2015. Mm -hmm. Okay, Why that's they not change true. It? That's you... not true. That's, that's a big... Thing. Well, you know what I mean. It's 20, the same engine. Yeah, 2021. I, I exaggerated to make a point, but yeah, yeah. Last four games are the same, aren't they? Yeah, yeah pretty it's much. It's just a roster, a roster change. It's like, could you really be mad at EA for doing that? It's like, people keep buying it, so... People get buying packs as well, so you can't come yeah, mad at them. Exactly. Packs all the time. But a uh, anyway, game, game go ahead, people sorry, will you. buy, and no one will be disappointed. I'm calling it, it will be the perfect game Hogwarts Legacy. Oh. Finally, yeah. we're getting the, the Hogwarts Harry Potter experience as a student. I've been waiting for this game my entire life. And when I, does it come out? Uh, like Wait, December? do we have a date? December, I think. Is it? Oh, and, really? um, oh, I thought it was further away. The, the gameplay reveal as well is one of the best gameplay reveals I've ever seen. Yeah. It, it was... I told you this, Percy. It reminded me of the dev diary we made, the setup of it. Mm -hmm. It was kind of set up in the same way. And and the way they talked about it in, in the reveal, the developers, they were really passionate. They showed those art projects. Oh, yeah. everything about this game has got me so excited. I I used to play free, the, the... You know the movie games that were based on the yeah. movies? I played the <laughs> uh, Order of the Phoenix, I think. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was one of the good ones. So the first one I played was Prisoner of Azkaban. That was kind of like a puzzle platformer. You know where you have to like connect beams of lighting to open the gate sure. to the next. Yeah, it was kind of like that. And then the fourth one was kind of a weird one. The fifth one, Order of the Phoenix, was very good. It also mm -hmm. had the same thing as the sixth one. It had like an open world hog where yeah, you go and explore. Like exploring I used to spend, Hogwarts was yeah, like insane. Yeah, I used to spend so many hours just going around collecting collectibles and making potions and. So the fact that I was happy with that little in what was pretty much a very shit game mm -hmm. just means, like for me, it's impossible for Hogwarts Legacy to flop. It's going to be the perfect game. I can't, I can't yeah. imagine uh, anything. Well, else. now we've got a good clip of you saying that. So if it comes it out like Cyberpunk, <laughs> I'll put my, I'll put my, not not life, but some, I'll put my. <laughs> not that far, but I'll put something on it. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll put something on it. I, it's gonna be an incredible game. And I'm it gives me very it. um like Hogwarts mixed with like Fable vibe in a way. If I don't know if you've ever played any of the Fable games, but they're very much no. like that sort of tongue in cheek, playful type of like uh, fantasy. Um, and Hogwarts looks like that. It looks very fun, which is really important for me in games. I like fun, colourful things. I don't like everything when it's just like bleak. Well, it's okay sometimes, but like just a bleak and like boring. Okay, I don't want every game to be like that. I want to have fun playing a game, so make your games fun. That should be the first priority in everything. And Who's thing, developing and publishing the game? It's there. It's it's basically a whole new studio dedicated to Harry Potter stuff. Oh, it's called. Really? Cool. It's called. It's something from the Harry. It's like a word that's. I, let me just look it up right now. Actually, uh, I mean, you talked about this. Like, we're probably not gonna hear from you for like a full month when this game comes yeah. out. It's be you Sims, mentioned like, this game. Uh, what what was that MMO that took you away for a month? Lost Ark. Uh, Lost Ark. Yeah. yeah, that'd be your that or my Elden Ring. <laughs> So yeah, says... Ring, but you were also pretty pretty gone for Cyberpunk's release. You were also That's true. But I wasn't expecting Cyberpunk to take me away yes. for a while. So, I was expecting yeah, yeah. Elden Ring. 
It's not yeah, EA yeah, yeah, yeah. that much, I know, because it's always been published, or it's been published by Warner Bros. But it's developed by Avalanche Software, and it's published <laughs> under Warner Bros. under their new... Por it's called Port Key Games. Right. Mm. Which means okay. that they've... Hopefully they're okay, gonna so do more. So it's not EA, so that means no packs. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I would have even been happy... Like, let's say someone released a game where you just walk around at Hogwarts and you got some nice music playing in the background. That would be a great game. Like, <laughs> that bare minimum would be so awesome for myself. Because it's been... We've never gotten a proper AAA title Harry Potter Hogwarts student simulator game. Not whatever. like an RPG yeah. type thing. It's like never ha yeah. it's never happened. It's kind of this. You know how we talked about we dream we dream of a, like a complete open world RPG Lord of the Rings game. Yeah. This is that, but for Harry Potter. Yeah. That's what it's. It means so much for me. I used to be such a Harry Potter nerd as well. I used to be. Did. What happened? To... You still are. I mean, still I, mean, are. I used to like. You tell me the look on your face. Read... You still are, game. Okay. <laughs> you are to... literally glowing. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to reread the books, like ah, uh, from ever since I was six years old, man. Ah, uh, I love, yeah. I love that stuff so much. Have you been to the Harry Potter like nah, places in London or anything? I have. Uh, no, nah, my sister used to work, or I don't remember, but she's used to been to the one in the US. Oh, the okay. uh you is it universal studios or something yeah probably yeah, and so i have like the butterbeer cup the i have the <laughs> have, the, have like, got the no i have the <laughs> container for the chocolate frog i even ate the chocolate frog <laughs> Thanks, <babe. laughs> you don't go. even know what game what game made me so happy as uh, as a as a Harry Potter, Harry Potter does to you. I do. Do you that. have like a um, a genre or a what's it called when you have like a like a genre of games? Not no, necessarily what games they are, but what theme. the devil is it a horror or a shooter? No, or... like Lord of the Rings is a it's a it's a franchise. 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 Do you have a franchise IP. that if rebooted would you'd be like fucking get out on this booking off a month for this motherfucker? I mean. Motherfucker. <laughs> It's not gonna get rebooted. It's probably gonna have another sequel. But for me, it's Doom games. Oh, okay. Um, like I've I've dunked 500 hours into Doom Eternal. Um, Did you play the original I, Dooms? Like when they back in the day? Not the original. Not back. Okay. In, my first Doom. My first Doom was actually 2016, yeah. and I fell in love with it. Uh, I just I don't know. I love uh, I love games that are APM heavy. Uh, that's why I like MMOs, actions per minute. If you don't know what APM is. Oh, um, okay. So basically, like games in which you just have a lot of button presses per minute. It just it requires like reflexes and mm -hmm. lots of skills and whatever. That's why, for example, in this video that I'm making, I'm such a huge fan of Arcanum as magic. To spoil my own videos, as I did games anyway. Um, I love stuff that is like you do this in order to get this buff and this buff gives you this and that mm -hmm. requires you to press another button so you have these combos and all of that and so yeah doom would be that because doom eternal provided me with like 500 hours into single player title which you complete in like 10 ish but i still dunked 500 into it because i'm such a big fan of of visceral uh gameplay so it would be that and then it would be another a continuation of metro series mm -hmm. yeah. uh loved loved metro uh last light loved metro uh, original 2033 and obviously Exodus. I was a huge fan of Exodus as well. Well, it goes uh, on to that point you've told me and Gim before, which is like you got into games very late. Like you, you didn't play a lot of games when you were a kid, as far as I remember. So no. you don't really have that nostalgia of like, yeah. oh, I want to see this come back or I want this rebooted or another game of this series or whatever. So I guess it's more recent for you. It's just like, I just want another yeah, game of the ones I like now. <laughs> Yeah, because like when I was uh, when I was a very young, like a like a kid, it was all only arcade machines, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like playstations and consoles didn't exist yet. It was all about uh, Game Boys and those arcade machines, uh, which was which kind of kind of funny. I recently started watching on YouTube uh, gameplay of those, so I can see how they end. Because I was so bad at these games as a kid that I don't know how they end. Yeah, I remember that so, with a lot of PlayStation Two games. I never completed yeah. them. <laughs> So like now that I've seen them, I, I'm like, oh, I have a closure now. <laughs> but, you can see uh, yeah, how Skyrim ends one day. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then, and then I, uh, I, uh, I don't know, just stopped playing games because I was focusing on my basketball career. That didn't work out, as you can see. But uh, yeah, I was too busy with stuff, so I didn't play like games in that time where I guess you guys started as well. So I don't have any title that I'm specifically tied to. I would say that is a bit older. Do you want to talk yours? about your basketball ventures? 
Because it's kind of it's I mean, kind of interesting. Sure. You went to the U.S. Yeah. and stuff. Like to me, that sounds yeah, really interesting. I mean, I just I've been talking too much on this podcast. I don't want to like. Hey, this is the sin shit. is a, gonna be a dad podcast, okay? You're never gonna <laughs> yeah. have time to talk again because you're never gonna be on the podcast when you have a kid. You'll be like, I can't do Every, this. Week, yeah, boys. yeah, true, true. <laughs> fair enough. I might as well. Yeah, everybody's gonna be in the comments. Can this sin shut up already? <laughs> Get your time um, in now while you've got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I was um, when I was ten. I guess my my parents were very supportive when it comes to getting me out of the house, which is kind of ironic considering. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were first. I tried, you know, martial arts. I tried being a goalkeeper because I was always very tall and blah blah blah. But then I just around eleven. I don't know. I fell in love with basketball. Not to say how because it's a long story. And they decided to support that endeavor. And then I had one of the biggest role mo- models in my life. One of the dudes that was basically an army training for me. He was a super strict coach, but fair and rewarding when I did good things and uh, punished me uh, in proper ways, obviously, when I didn't do good <laughs> things. And eventually, I knew you were going to go there. I knew it as soon you as I said You said it in me. proper ways. I mean, you I mean, did the, the pictures me. that popped up in my head, I don't... <laughs> I mean, I know you guys. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I was not a very athletic kid. I was very kind of like slow and just, just not a very athletic kid. But then when I started... Uh, uh, having training sessions with him. I don't know, something unlocked into me, whatever it was, I guess genetically, maybe. I was um, uh, blessed, but I just didn't know it. And then, yeah, I was uh, in about a year and a half. I actually became a professional athlete because there was a coach that was watching one of my games and he was like, oh, okay, this kid is actually pretty good. I was 14 and the team is called Partizan. It's one of the biggest... I guess sports clubs here in Serbia mm-hmm. and then I trained for them for about a year I joined trained and then during one of those games there was an American um, scout and they would would this kid be interesting moving into the United States as a part of a foreign exchange student program and then he could practice basketball or play basketball for our va- varsity team and that's where I kind of learned uh, English as well uh, without that's that was a high school right tough. what's that was that a high school yeah, it's high school. Okay, so, so you were... A, how old were you? Um, I was uh, 18, 17 to 18. Okay. That's when I I basically took a flight from Belgrade to Frankfurt, Frankfurt to Chicago, Chicago to um, Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, I was... But you lived uh, in uh, LA for a time. It was Sacramento. No, it was... No, I landed in Sacramento, sorry. It was... Okay. I uh, left from LA... Oh. Then back to Serbia when I was coming back. But I, when I was going there, it was to Sacramento. And it was a uh, a high school called Liberty Christian High School. It was a very religious high school. But they had a very, very strong basketball team. Mm. And yeah, I don't know. One thing led to another. It was a, it was a very good, good career. Short, but very good. I was very successful. We won the uh, California Championship as the best high school in the northern section. Wow. And then we uh, qualified for like the whole California, but we lost in semifinals or whatever. I also won a couple of slam, slam dunk champions, which are on YouTube. Um, yeah, show that video. The one you showed was like the 140p video of you, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah and you pause it. And you're like, that, that, that's me. And I'm like, I mean, like, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I take your word for it. I cannot see shit here. What's going on? Yeah. And it was, by the way, it was taken with like a Nokia N95, <laughs> which is supposedly a very good phone back then because my parents basically bought it for me. And it was like a next gen phone for back in the day. I remember because the American. Uh, friends of mine would be like oh man this phone is really cool how much how much did you pay for it and even for 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 that it's still shit when you try to watch it that's the only yeah, evidence I've, we have of your yeah. career <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah i won a couple of championships i won a couple of slam dunk contests and then eventually yes. i've uh, i've uh, you know there was jumper's knee and then there was additional sprains there was a broken hand and then i eventually decided you know what i need to pursue uh, education then try to focus on something that keeps pushing me back into you know um a dark place because when you uh when you're an athlete mm. and when you get injured you're basically benched for a certain period of time and that period of time you could have used to progress further in mm-hmm. your athleticism or your technical ability instead you are in a stasis and then when you come back you need to train for a certain time to get back at the position that you were originally uh, at before you got uh, injured and so going through that cycle three times 
for me was absolutely devastating mentally yeah and i said you know what it might be better to focus on education so i can get a decent job rather than try to do this basketball stuff it might be a dead end for me so i stopped at around 24 and, uh, and then i finished university and yeah Wow. Well, it's not uh, a very interesting story, but yeah. Well, I won a couple of sports day relays, so, <laughs> you know, not to brag or anything, but I got a couple of medals there. <laughs> what about you, Gim? You, I know you were, you were very active. Um, I mean... Physically, right? Yeah, I am. Uh, I mean, I've always done sports my entire life. When I was five, I already started playing with, like, there wasn't a football team. I don't. I don't care if the Americans don't know I'm, <laughs> if I'm talking about like a soccer or football. It's called football. I, I started playing with people that were older than me uh, because there wasn't a team for my age, and uh, I used to be quite good early on because, especially when I begin at the start, like the physical stuff doesn't really matter. I was really small. Uh, I used to be like super, very small. I was, as I've said before, I was born very premature. And I was super small, but still, I was. I probably I got into the sports quicker than other people my age because of my brother. I looked up to him, and I was always watching it on TV. So um, I had a l very good. And at one point, when I was like 14, 15, it was a very serious venture into football. I wanted to be professional, but uh, it might have been because of gaming. It might also have been been because people when they reach that age you start thinking more about like training for a certain type of body right when you're right. playing football you're not really yeah thinking about your body like i just had a normal teenage teenager body but i could still like run for hours upon hours and i was quick but at that in those years uh, it didn't really matter so that's why i started getting into martial arts mm. um around like 16 Mm -hmm. um, I was still playing football at the time, but I was starting to lose interest. Uh, also, I also had like a strict coach like Yusin, but I just found him cringe at that point, maybe because <laughs> I was getting tired of it. So like going yeah. to training, uh, I think it was five or six times a week for football at that point just seemed like a chore for me. The only thing I really liked was when we were actually playing matches. Right. Um, and so I started doing martial arts. Uh, which I've which I'd also started I started watching UFC also at that point so I was very into it and it was just very cool to come into a brand new world where you got these different types of combat arts like jiu jitsu uh, muay thai like learning how you can that you can master this and use them and also the people that you meet uh, doing that uh, there there's a lot of interesting cool people you can meet uh, through that yeah you learn a lot about yeah I, I can talk about hours about my love for combat sports yeah so this is, is like mixed martial arts or focused on like a specific combat yeah race? so um i did jiu-jitsu wrestling and muay thai but my kind of like the thing that i was more or less specializing for was um uh, muay thai so even mm -hmm. when you watch like mixed martial artists, they're, they're, they always have like one branch of a martial art. They're, they kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's their main thing. Yeah. yeah, I really mm -hmm. like that because uh, I have really long limbs. My my legs are like sixty percent of my body. So <laughs> kicking and stuff like that is something that yeah it comes very natural to me. But, cool. Uh, yeah, I and, and you you're still doing that, right? You still so or just just going to the gym. This was like this is a COVID story. So a COVID happened. And a place where like COVID rules obviously will be hella strict. Not not that it isn't in other uh, fields. It's of course mixed martial arts because you're in a gym, barefooted, like minimal clothing. So that closed down, and then I didn't really have a place to train, and I lost interest. And then when we came back, I caught something that's called uh, a ringworm. Uh, it's like a I don't know exactly what it is, but it's like a something you get on your skin. It, it usually happens in like wardrobes. I got that then I was out for another six weeks And then I just started to after I lost interest, but I've never lost interest in training though in general I've stayed fit right. my entire life and mm -hmm. I will always do that Well, very cool on that note We can close out the podcast because uh, it's been going on for a long time. 
I just actually I wanted to wrap it up with just our future plans for oh, yeah. uh, for 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 the for the channel. Yeah, just generally like briefly because we're at the end and we can close it up with this. What our plans are with the channel? Are we just going to be doing podcasts? Are we going to be expanding to to other platforms? <laughs> and and generally just what our plans are. And if you guys want to talk about that okay. just briefly, we well, can close it up. We'll touch on the podcast first, as that's kind of like what we're doing now. Then we'll kind of branch out a little bit. But yeah. Um. I think for now, one of the things we discussed before the podcast um, is regarding the actual podcast itself. I know there's been a lot of talk about like guests and things on uh, in the comments as well. We might have guests later on in the future, but we wanted to get quite a few like under our belts mm. of just us for a while, just to kind of like get us into the flow and like how we actually. We need do to be comfortable. Yeah, we need to be comfortable ourselves mm -hmm. and set parameters for how we do stuff before we can invite some yeah. outsider into like our. Our, our sphere and yeah we need to do that so that we can make them comfortable right because yeah when you, when you invite someone yeah. to a podcast you need to like you know include them into the conversation mm -hmm. and we need to be good podcasters in order to do that yep so that so okay. guess is something we will probably do but later down the line so you can look mm -hmm. forward to that but it'll be a while and we won't really specify until we all kind of privately feel ready for something like that but that's as far as the podcast is concerned, I guess, because everything else just comes naturally. Like whatever we want to do with the podcast will just come with experience and like what we feel is best for each episode and what works, what doesn't, things like that. Um, we discussed Skyrim together briefly, so there could be videos like that on this channel uh, doing extra things. I don't know if you two had any other thoughts on um, where you would want to go with the channel or anything like that. I mean, I called, uh, we have two playlists currently. One is the podcast and one I just called Try Hard Specials for the trailer. <laughs> so we, who, yeah. who knows, we could do like two Try Hard Specials or three every mm -hmm. year. And that's something like, that could be something different from the podcast. I don't know. Yeah, I really did want to do a eventually I wanted to do it regularly, but we'll. I don't know if we'll start it straight away. It's like a try hard live, so like once a month maybe we do like a live podcast or something. It, it won't be officially like the podcast of that week, mm -hmm. but we'll do an extra show that's a live one, and we can answer questions and do whatever you guys want to do on, on yeah. this channel. But I don't even think until like we get a certain amount of subs or something, we can even stream yet, can we? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We, I think we have to get a YouTube partner, I'm fairly sure. Yeah, okay, but, so uh, that'll be definitely later down the line, but that's something I want to do with this channel eventually. Yeah. And also, we are, we are somebody in the comment did ask uh, that we will be, uh, if we will be uh, redistributing the podcast to other platforms, mm -hmm. and we will. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see about Spotify, Apple Music, and stuff like that, but that's something Gim is looking into. Yeah. And additionally, um, bear with us this is we are basically uh going with the flow because the main idea of the podcast was to get us into the workflow mm -hmm. originally and now that we have kind of established to a degree that workflow we are figuring out what we want to do so it's going to be a creative and um it's going to be a creative process for us as well and eventually we will have a stable i guess you could say um predetermined uh, system with how we want to do things but for now it's going to be like this and yeah, guests are going to be eventually a thing. It's just we got to get comfortable with the whole process ourselves before we uh, invite anybody else. But we do have plans for that in the future, for sure. Mm -hmm. You can and expect day... a podcast a week. And then yeah, you, that much you might see extra stuff on top of that uh, eventually. Yeah. On, and maybe in the future, we can have segments. We can maybe have oh, yeah. segments. <laughs> segments, <laughs> if anyone <laughs> gives us ideas. I know we're meant to be the actual ones like coming up with things yeah. and doing actual work, but we're... Um, bit lazy for that so you can do it for us yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's a i guess that's a good place to close it out until it the is. next episode so Peace. thanks everyone for uh tuning into this one we'll see you in the next one see you around <laughs>